This is part three of this series, Salvation, So Much Bigger Than A.D. 70. And to reiterate, uh, I must, because I know that people have misconstrued this statement so much bigger than AD 70 as somehow meaning that AD 70 was not important. Now, AD 70, those are just characters and numbers. The event of the destruction of the temple was a huge eschatological event in the mind of Christ. It was huge for Christ. He devoted well, of course, we call it the Olivet Discourse. And again, as I've mentioned, I sort of believe that Revelation is the Olivet Discourse of John, who wrote the gospel. The destruction of the temple was the outward sign that the priest, the high priest, had come out for the eagerly awaiting congregation in the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 17, he could not bring them in because those sacrifices cannot take away sins. Hebrews chapters 9 and 10. It's impossible, it says, for the blood of those beasts to take away sins. But the word of God teaches Christ had a sacrifice that purified the conscience and it took away sins. It worked and therefore, according to Hebrews chapter 10, really, Hebrews 8 through 10. They're my favorite chapters in the entire Bible. He perfected the conscience. How much more shall the blood of Christ uh, purge your, your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Hebrews 9, 14. So he, the destruction of the temple was the outward sign that the sacrifice of God was able to bring in the people of God, the eagerly awaiting congregation into the holiest of all, the presence of God. In your presence is fullness of joy. And that's where we are today. So yes, AD 70 is very important. That's not what I was meaning when I said so much bigger than AD 70. What I meant there is that salvation was not restricted to only those believers in AD 70 or pre-AD 70. What did the prophets expect? And this is going to be so important for us today. For hundreds, if not thousands of years, were all the prophets expecting salvation from the Roman armies or something much bigger? I say much bigger. Some people have gotten ashamed of saying I'm saved because they are preterists. Preterists should be the ones saying, I am saved more than any other believers in some different eschatological paradigm, whether it's premillennialism, golly, the, uh, the maze of pre-tribulational uh, premillennialism, which I was involved in, mid-wrath rapture, post-tribulation, post-millennialism, amillennialism, optimistic amillennialism, <laughs> you know, it just goes on and on and on. When you believe in fulfillment, you, above all people, should delight in saying, I am saved. I am saved. Why? Well, I'm going to keep these two passages. For by grace are you saved. And he was talking to Gentiles. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through, uh, well, the end of the chapter. Oh, Ephesians chapter 2 is just absolutely beautiful. And chapter 3 is just gorgeous. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, that is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. In other words, all the promises that were made to the national people of Israel, which includes the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, who had hope, the Gentiles were without hope, without God having no hope as we saw in chapter 2 of Ephesians. Well, now they're just as much partakers, fellow heirs, heirs of what? Jesus, as we're going to see. Members of the same body. There's no difference between Jew or Greek, for you are all one in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So now here's this passage in Genesis chapter 49, where Jacob is basically prophesying of what would befall Israel. From this time all the way to, he says, the latter days. 
And he speaks about all the, well, basic, and there's some good, but he speaks about the, the, the evils that these different tribes uh, would commit. But in verse 18, that's the whole chapter, but in verse 18, he says, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he says, I wait for your salvation. And the Hebrew word here is fascinating. It is Yeshua. It's Yeshua. And so whenever in these messianic contexts, the word salvation is used, it is the Hebrew word Yeshua, Yahweh saves, or if you will, Jehovah saves. You shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save. In other words, you shall call his name Yahweh saves, for he shall save. What is it telling us in Matthew 121? Jesus is Yahweh. He is Yahweh. Yah, the self-existent one. Very important. So he says here, I wait for your Yeshua, O Lord. And this is, again, this is a prophecy. He says in verse 10 earlier, he says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Read Psalm 89 and of course, uh, David and Solomon's words uh, about this promise. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh, and that means peace or tranquility, until Shiloh, until peace comes. Remember, he, Ephesians chapter 2 calls Jesus, he is our peace, right? He is our Shalom, our Shiloh, our Solomon. And unto him shall be the gathering of the people. That is, through Jesus, he gathers them together. Well, what do you see in Ephesians? He's made of the two, one new man. He's gathered them together in one body, in Christ. You are all one in Christ Jesus. So what a beautiful passage in Genesis chapter 49. Well, here's the question I have that will really solidify and wrap up this whole issue. Is salvation for today? Well, if you say you have Jesus, you are saved. You have salvation. Don't be afraid. Don't let these weird uh, uh, idolaters, preterists try to tell you that there's no saving today, that you can't say I'm saved or that only applied to the first century. No, 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 no. The reason they say that is because they don't know their Old Testament. They need to know Jesus. They need to know their Old Testament. They're just just extrapolating based upon their own fanciful ideas and they for some reason delight in telling us how much has passed be careful be cautious what or who once we answer this question who is salvation it becomes so wonderful and beautiful and basic the simplicity of the gospel Exodus 15, and this is called the Song of Moses, which is totally prophetic of the Messiah. The Lord, Yahweh, is my strength. The Lord is my strength. And song, the Lord is my song. He is become or has become my salvation. This is prophetic. He is my God. I will prepare him a habitation. My father's God and I will exalt him. This very likely is Jesus Christ speaking, okay? It's prophetic. I know you say, well, isn't the song of Moses? Listen, it says, I will prepare him a habitation. You compare that with Psalm 132 and John chapter 14. I go to prepare a place. That's the church. That's the dwelling place of God. He made the church his righteousness. He gave the church his righteousness. And of course, we remember righteousness and truth are the foundation of your throne. Jesus sits on the throne of his church. We are his throne. We are his righteousness. All right. Psalm 132, again, God is our salvation. Jesus is our salvation. I will also clothe, look, I will clothe her priests with salvation. Of course, he's made us kings and priests. First Peter chapter two, you're a royal priesthood. Uh, Revelation chapter one, um, verse, verses nine and 10. And then also Revelation chapter five, verses nine and 10. Through his blood, he has made us kings and priests unto our God, all right? I will also clothe her priests with salvation. So salvation is the clothing. You are clothed with it. You say, well, I'm not saved. Well, then you ain't clothed. <laughs> you're naked. If you're not saved, if you, I mean, why would you delight in saying that? I'm not saying you, whoever, but whoever is saved, why would they love that? It's because they don't know their Old Testament. That's why. 
That's why they bought into this weird cerebral brainiac mentality of just time statements. What happened in AD 70 stays in AD 70, right? Oh, God forbid. I will clothe her priests with salvations and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. Well, shouting aloud for joy is the result of being clothed. In nakedness, there's shame. In clothing, there is joy and confidence and boldness before the throne of God. Hebrews chapter 4. Well, look at this. As many of you as were baptized, and this is the baptism of the wells of salvation, the gospel. This has nothing to do with physical water. This is the wells of salvation. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. There is how we are baptized, dunked into Christ, right? We are clothed. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. We're clothed with, I will clothe our priest with what? Christ, Jesus, he is our song, our strength, our salvation. Psalm 118, verses 21 through 22. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. You, God. You know, Jesus is called the door. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am wisdom. I am the life. I am the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am your salvation. It's in a person. The beautiful, glorious, wonderful, holy person of Jesus, Yahweh, God Almighty. So he has become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. So we say that Jesus is the chief cornerstone. We also say that Jesus is our salvation. Psalm 35, verses 1 through 3. Contend, O Lord, with those who contend with me. These are the false accusations of the Pharisees who were attacking God's people with these accusations. Sinner, sinner, sinner. Stone, put them to death. Stone her. Fight against those who fight against me. Now, of course, they were fighting against Jesus. This is messianic. Very likely Jesus talking here. Take hold of shield and buckler and rise up to help me. Draw the spear and javelin against my pursuers. Say to my soul, I am thy salvation. If you believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead. God saved Jesus. And you say, well, wait a minute. I thought you said Jesus is God. Yes, that's why he said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. I will raise it up. But he spoke of the temple of his body. Jesus is almighty God. This is just so beautiful. And here's Christ praying the Lord. Say to my soul, this beautiful, tender-hearted prayer of Jesus. Very likely in the garden of Gethsemane. Say to my soul, I am thy salvation. And we get to say that because we're in Christ. As this has happened to Christ, we are in him. We get to say, Lord, you have said to my soul, I am thy salvation. So beautiful. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. You will say in that day, I will get, this is, this is the day has come. This was the day of Messiah. The cross, resurrected life of Jesus and his parousia, presence in us. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away and you comforted me. This is what Jesus did. He took God's wrath, deflected it, diverted it away from us onto himself. He comforted us. Surely what God is my salvation. I will trust. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. Why? Because God, look, stop making up this 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 lie that we are not saved today look we are no longer afraid because we are saved the salvation is god for the lord god is my strength and my might that goes right along with exodus 15 the song of moses he has become my salvation 
God is my salvation. He's become my salvation. Compare this with Exodus chapter 15. With joy, you will draw waters from the wells of salvation. This has nothing to do with the Roman armies. Absolutely nothing. This is an eternal salvation. Why? Because it's God and God is eternal. He is our salvation. The Lord Jesus. Now look at this. This is beautiful too. Simeon, the story, Christmas story. Praise to the Lord, Master, you are now dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. He's lifted up the Christ, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light. So what do we see? This is your salvation. This is the light. And this is the revelation to the Gentiles. Ah, Ephesians chapter 3, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body. A light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And it's not saying, please don't get weird and partition these. Light and glory are synonymous. It's not saying, well, Israel gets glory, but Gentiles only get light. No, no. It's saying Jesus is our salvation. He's our light. He's our glory. We're united. Same body. Heirs. You're all one in Christ Jesus. Now look at this. This gets good. Luke chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Every valley. You've heard it. Again, Christmas stories, right? This, this, it's not just for Christmas anymore. I know you probably get tired of me saying that. Every valley shall be filled. Every mountain shall be made low. And this valley probably is referring to the humble, the broken and contrite. And every mountain made low. Those who are of a lofty spirit exalting themselves, right? And the crooked shall be made straight. Oh, our crooked hearts have been made straight. Amen. And the rough ways made smooth. <laughs> you know, we talk about smoothing out our rough edges. Oh, the rough edges of depravity and hatred and rebellion and idolatry and self-righteous. He has smoothed them out in the eyes of God. We are smooth stones. We are gemstones. We are diamonds. We, have, we, are, we are these stones on the ephod of Christ, our high priest. And he always cares for us. And he ever lives to make intercession for us. Amen. The rough way is made smooth. Now watch. Concentrate. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Well, we just saw Simeon say, mine eyes have seen your salvation. So we know this is Jesus, right? This is Luke. John the Baptist is saying, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Where is he quoting from? Isaiah 40. I'm fulfilling this, John the Baptist is saying. <gasps> ah, now let's go back to the passage. Every valley, Isaiah 40 verses 4 through 5, shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then watch, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it. What did John the Baptist say? He translated glory as what? All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Salvation and glory are synonymous. And if you believe you are truly glorified as Paul says we are, Jesus said, the glory I have given them, you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one. Galatians says you're all one in Christ Jesus. In order to be one, you have to have his glory. Paul says, whom he called, he also justified. Whom he, well, whom he predestined, he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. Whom he justified, he also what? Glorified. You're glorified. So that's why John the Baptist here is saying, all flesh shall see the salvation. He says, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people, flesh, shall see it. Why? For the mouth of the Lord is spoken. Guarantee. Just say no to dispensationalism and this, this blasphemous idea that God had to change his plan because the Jews rejected him. No, he did not. He came to be king. He says, Pilate says, are you a king then? Jesus said, to this, I, to this end, I was born. He was born to be king. He was born to be your salvation. He was born to be your glory, your light, your righteousness. And I will finish off with this absolutely glorious passage, again, that sums it all up and solidifies this wonderful truth and doctrine that we can say, I am saved. 
I am saved. I have salvation. I have Christ. Violence shall no more be heard in your land. Goes right along with uh, uh, neither shall they learn war anymore, right? They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Why? Because now we're all one in Christ Jesus. He is made of the two, one new man. He is our peace. It's a different type of peace. My peace I give you not as the world gives. We need to understand it's the peace through the blood of of Jesus Christ. We have peace with God and peace with one another. So violence shall no more be heard in your land. Why? You're going to be united with the Gentiles through faith. Nor devastation or destruction in your borders. You shall call your walls salvation. He is our strength. He is our defense. He's our fortress. He's our walls. And your gates praise. The sun shall no longer be your light by day. Why? Jesus is our light. I am the light of the world. Nor for brightness shall the moon give light to you by night, but the Lord will be your everlasting light. He is our light and your God will be your glory, our salvation, our light, our glory. Your sun shall no more go down or your moon withdraw itself for the Lord will be your everlasting light. That's Jesus, Yahweh. That's the word Yahweh there, Yahweh. Jesus, I am Yahweh. I am your everlasting light. All your days of mourning shall be ended. Isaiah 61. He will give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning. Praise the Lord. We are beautiful in his eyes. He's glorified us. Your people shall all be righteous. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we would become the righteousness of God. They will possess the land forever. That's Christ. He is our inheritance. God said to Aaron, I am the portion of, I am your lot and the portion of your inheritance. In Psalms, it says, the Lord is our portion. The Lord is our inheritance. That's Jesus. He's our salvation. They are the shoot that I planted. This is God's work. It's not our work. This is a sovereign God who planted us. The work of my hands. Why? So that I may be glorified. The least of them shall become a clan. That's the church. The body of Christ. The smallest one, a mighty nation. You are a holy nation. I am Yahweh. In its time, I will accomplish it quickly. You are saved. If you're a believer in Jesus... You are saved. You are glorified. You have joy. He is your strength, your song, your salvation. God, the Lord Jesus, He is our salvation. Worship Him, glorify Him, adore Him. Give Him thanks for what you have just seen in these beautiful scriptures. Adore Him, worship Him all day long. Why? Because I know you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing, and I do too. We don't want to do those things. We want to obey him out of gratitude. All right? We're going to fall. He's still your salvation. We're going to face plant. He's still your song. He's still your strength. Say it together with me. I am saved with an everlasting salvation. Say it one more time. I am saved with an everlasting salvation. Why? Because your salvation is Jesus. God be with you.